Hard science fiction is a category of science fiction characterized by an emphasis on scientific accuracy. The term was first used in print in 1957 by P. Schuyler Miller in a review of John W. Campbell's Islands of Space in the November issue of Astounding Science Fiction. The complementary term soft science fiction, formed by analogy to hard science fiction, first appeared in the late 1970s. The term is formed by analogy to the popular distinction between the hard, natural, and soft social sciences science fiction critic gary westphal argues that neither term is part of a rigorous taxonomy instead they are approximate ways of characterizing stories that reviewers and commentators have found useful stories revolving around scientific and technical consistency were written as early as the 1870s with the publication of jules verne's 20000 leagues under the sea in 1870 and around the world in 80 days in 1873 among other stories the attention to detail in Verne's work became an inspiration for many future scientists and explorers, although Verne himself denied writing as a scientist or seriously predicting machines and technology of the future. <laughs> <laughs> Scientific rigor Hugo Gernsback believed from the beginning of his involvement with science fiction in the 1920s that the story should be instructive, although it was not long before he found it necessary to print fantastical and unscientific fiction in amazing stories to attract readers. During Gernsback's long absence from SF Publishing, from 1936 to 1953, the field evolved away from his focus on facts and education. The golden age of science fiction is generally considered to have started in the late 1930s and lasted until the mid-1940s, bringing with it, "...a quantum jump in quality, perhaps the greatest in the history of the genre." According to science fiction historians Peter Nichols and Mike Ashley, however, Gernsback's views were unchanged. In his editorial in the first issue of Science Fiction Plus, he gave his view of the modern SF story the fairy tale brand, the weird or fantastic type of what mistakenly masquerades under the name of science fiction today." And he stated his preference for, "...truly scientific, prophetic science fiction with the full accent on science." In the same editorial, Gernsback called for patent reform to give science fiction authors the right to create patents for ideas without having patent models because many of their ideas predated the technical progress needed to develop specifications for their ideas. The introduction referenced the numerous prescient technologies described throughout Ralph 124C41+. The heart of the hard SF designation is the relationship of the science content and attitude to the rest of the narrative, and for some readers, at least the hardness or rigor of the science itself. One requirement for hard SF is procedural or intentional. A story should try to be accurate, logical, credible, and rigorous in its use of current scientific and technical knowledge about which technology, phenomena, scenarios, and situations that are practically and or theoretically possible. For example, the development of concrete proposals for spaceships, space stations, space missions, and a U.S. space program in the 1950s and 1960s influenced a widespread proliferation of hard space stories. Later discoveries do not necessarily invalidate the label of hard SF, as evidenced by P. Schuyler Miller, who called Arthur C. Clarke's 1961 novel A Fall of Moondust hard SF, and the designation remains valid even though a crucial plot element, the existence of deep pockets of moondust in lunar craters, is now known to be incorrect. There is a degree of flexibility in how far from real science a story can stray before it leaves the realm of hard SF. HSF authors scrupulously avoid such technology as faster than light travel of which there are alternatives endorsed by NASA, while authors writing softer SF accept such notions sometimes referred to as enabling devices, since they allow the story to take place readers of hard SF often try to find inaccuracies in stories. For example, a group at MIT concluded that the planet Mesklin in Hal Clement's 1953 novel Mission of Gravity would have had a sharp edge at the equator, and a Florida high school class calculated that in Larry Niven's 1970 novel Ringworld the topsoil would have slid into the seas in a few thousand years. The same book featured another inaccuracy, the eponymous Ringworld is not in a stable orbit and would crash into the Sun without active stabilization. Niven fixed these errors in his sequel The Ringworld Engineers, and noted them in the foreword. Films set in outer space that aspire to the hard SF label try to minimize the artistic liberties taken for the sake of practicality of effect. Factors include How the film accounts for weightlessness in space 
how the film depicts sound despite the vacuum of space. Whether telecommunications are instant or are limited by the speed of light. Topic: Representative works. Arranged chronologically by publication year. Topic: Short stories. Hal Clement, Uncommon Sense. 1945 James Blish Surface Tension 1952 Book 3 of the Seedling Stars 1957 Tom Godwin The Cold Equations 1954 Isaac Asimov Evidence 1946 Paul Anderson Keary 1968 Frederick Pohl Day Million 1971 Larry Niven, In Constant Moon, 1971, and The Whole Man, 1974, and Neutron Star, 1966. Greg Bear, Tangents, 1986. Jeffrey A. Landis, A Walk in the Sun, 1991. Verna Vinge, Fast Times at Fairmont High, 2001. Topic: Novels. Robert A. Heinlein, The Rolling Stones, 1952. Hal Clement, Mission of Gravity, 1953. Harry Martinson, Aniara, 1953. John Wyndham, The Outward Urge, 1959. Stanislaw Lem, Solaris, 1961. Arthur C. Clarke, A Fall of Moondust, 1961, 2001, A Space Odyssey, 1968, Rendezvous with Rama, 1972. Michael Crichton, The Andromeda Strain, 1969. Paul Anderson, Tau Zero, 1970. Joe Haldeman, The Forever War, 1974. James P. Hogan, The Two Faces of Tomorrow, 1979. Robert L. Forward, Dragon's Egg, 1980. Charles Sheffield, Between the Strokes of Night, 1985. Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park, 1990. Robert Silverberg, Editor, Murasaki, 1992. Kim Stanley Robinson, The Mars Trilogy, Red Mars, 1992. Green Mars, 1993. Blue Mars, 1996. Aurora, 2015. Ben Bova, Grand Tour Series, 1992 to 2009. Nancy Cress, Beggars in Spain, 1993. Catherine Asaro, Primary Inversion, 1995, 2012. Linda Nagata, The Nanotech Succession, 1995 to 1998. Stephen Baxter, Ring, 1996. Greg Egan, Shields Ladder, 2002. Alastair Reynolds, Pushing Ice, 2005. Six and Lou, The Three Body Problem, 2006. Paul J. McCauley, The Quiet War, 2008. Neil Stevenson, Seven Eves, 2015. Topic films: Frau im Mond, 1929-2001, A Space Odyssey, 1968, Marooned, 1969, The Andromeda Strain, 1971, Silent Running, 1972, Solaris, 1972, Dark Star, 1974, Blade Runner, 1982-2010, The Year We Make Contact, 1984, Sequel to 2001, Contact, 1997, Gattaca, 1997, The Man from Earth, 2007, Moon, 2009, Robot and Frank 2012, Europa Report 2013, Automata 2014. Topic: Television. Men into Space 1959-1960. Star Cops 1987. Regenesis 2004 to 2008. Mars 2016 present. Topic: Anime, Manga. Mobile Suit Gundam, 1979. 2001 Nights, 1984, 1986. They Were Eleven, 1986. Royal Space Force: The Wings of Honyamize, 1987. 
Pat Labor 2, The Movie, 1993. Planeties, 1999, 2004. Flag, 2006. Pale Cocoon, 2006. Deno Coil, 2007. Moonlight Mile, 2007. Rocket Girls, 2007. Space Brothers, 2007 present. Eden of the East, 2009. Topic: Visual novels. Police Anorts, 1994. You know, a girl who chants love at the bound of this world, 1996. Topic: See also. Hard fantasy. Hard and soft science. Hypothetical technology. Interstellar travel in fiction Mundane science fiction Soft science fiction Notes